Okay, my title of the, the, the presentation is Barriers in Accessing Direct Observed Therapy Short Course Among the Adult Pulmonary Tuberculosis Patients in Indola, Zambia. My names, I think they have been mentioned. I'm Ellen Mutintamunyati. Uh, going now to, to the summary. I, I've already mentioned the topic. When I look at barriers, I look at what difficulties are the patients or the, ob or the obstacles the patients are facing to actually get drug refill. As you know, DOTS is one of the TB control strategies and its aim actually is to, co to control or break the cycle of transmission in TB. The aims of this direct observed therapy short course is to prevent the relapses. It also reduces the chance of drug resistance developing because it promotes compliance. It also prolongs the lives of people with HIV and TB. And it also reduces the incidence of TB. Thus, increasing the proportion of patients cured. As the proportion of patients who are cured increases, it also reduces the death rate. In the same line, it also prevents the drug resistance because we find that the dots actually it improves the cure rate. And in the long term, transmission is also interrupted and the incidence falls. So what? What is the problem? When you look at TB in Zambia, actually, it's a major health problem. When we take, for example, in 2007, we had about 80% of the TB patients in Indola Urban who missed the drug collection appointments. The problems which led to this drug appointment collection missing, it was actually not known. Hence, the reason which prompted me actually to look at these dots because when we look at the acceptable dots dropout rates uh, which are stipulated by the WHO is about 5% and this we find it in the WHO 2003. So this scenario may lead to the drug resistance. Remember we are looking at the aims of these dots actually as the one which uh, prevents drug resistance. So if people have missed or the patients have missed the, the drugs, the following them up actually is time consuming. So because of that, you find that maybe the patients may not take the drugs and they may develop the mild drug TB resistance. And this drug resistance TB actually is very, very expensive to treat. And we are saying one, case of mouth drug resistant TB costs about $200,000, which is equivalent uh, to the cost of treating about 700 TB patients. So MDR TB treatment period actually is prolonged as opposed to the normal treatment of TB. The transmission period actually, as this period is prolonged, you find that even the transmission period is also prolonged. What are the methods which were used in this research as I was looking at these barriers in accessing dots? About 198 patients were randomly selected using the sampling, existing sampling frame which is the TB register. So all these patients were listed in the TB register and numbers were assigned and using the strata computer software a table of random numbers were created for the start population. Data was collected using structured interview schedule. And before data was collected, actually the ethical clearance was obtained from the, uh, the ethics committee, also from the Ministry of Health, and also from the relevant clinics where this data was collected. Chi-square was used to test the association of variables. The results. The hypothesis was the, the, is there are no barriers in accessing dots among the PTB patients. So we are looking at the, the sub-hypothesis and TB adverse effects are not linked to accessibility of dots. 
But in this study, it was found out that actually about 96% of the respondents of, of, of the patients who experienced joint pain stayed from collecting drugs. Actually, these results were affirmed by Gilbo et al. 2006, whose assertions were that barriers which may manifest in defaulting are linked to knowledge and side effects. The other sub hypothesis was distance is not linked to accessibility of dots. Distance actually was noted as a factor in the rural areas of Gambia. Again, in this study, we find that distance actually was negligible. It was not found to be a factor, only that the patients, they will need actually some money for them to get on a bus to go and collect their drugs. The other sub-hypothesis was the number of minutes or hours of waiting to be attended to is not linked to accessing those. Actually, in this study, it was found out that waiting time did not discourage the patients from accessing dots. So these findings actually are different from the findings by the North Carolina Center for Public Policy Research. They found out that in fact the migrant farm workers, when they did the study, the waiting time was actually a barrier. The other sub-hypothesis was about stigma in form of name calling is not linked to accessibility of dots. In, in my study, I found out that 41% were stigmatized and 15% feared to collect drugs as a result of stigma. So just as in my research, it was found out that in Dell et al, TB stigma was actually a a barrier in controlling TB. Rubel and Caro show also social stigma affecting patients, familial relations and response to illness. What is the significance? The significance of this study is that actually it can be or it is a pioneering one such that you have the data actually when it comes to looking to barriers on which other people or academicians can refer to. It's also a great potential in improving self delivery. The methodology could be used for subsequent studies. These are some of the references which are used. There are about five, but most there are many. These are just the, some of them. Conclusion. Patients experienced five sets of barriers. These are anti-TB drug adverse uh, distance, the number of minutes they actually were waiting to be attended to, support one received from the health workers, and stigma. So in conclusion, I'm saying accessing treatment also depends on the goodwill and remains actually the responsibility of the patient. Dots alone is not sufficient to control TB in settings with high HIV infection rates. The clear challenge is to move beyond identification of barriers. Innovative strategies to resolve the problem actually are needed to be identified if we are to control TB. What is the future step? Actually, the future step